Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Ethan Pease. I am a Wisconsin native. I was born in Madison and grew up in Partyville, Wisconsin. Graduated from high school there in 2018. Um, I'll just get right into it. During the run-up to and on Election Day, I was working as a temporary hire at United Mailing Services, a USPS subcontracting company in Madison, Wisconsin, um, located in the Stoughton Road area of Madison, if any of you are familiar. I began working there on August 26th of 2020 as a route driver and a box truck driver. This meant that my job was to pick up mail on a predetermined route that went through Cottage Grove, Windsor, and the Stoughton Road area of Madison around UMS. And then I would take this mail to UMS where it would be sorted and metered, and I would then take the sorted mail on the final box truck run to the USPS on Milwaukee Street in Madison, Wisconsin. In September or October, I began to deliver mail-in ballots from United Mailing Services to the USPS as part of my evening box truck run. I knew that I would be taking ballots because there would always be a mail cart marked for me for ballots only with a special green tag that said for ballots only. On one occasion, I forgot to retrieve the ballots from my nightly box truck run. Luckily, I had to take two trucks that night, so I got them on the second truck run. After that, though, I always made sure to get them because you don't want to take a box truck and have to go all the way back for one cart and then take it all the way back to the post office. It's about a mile drive. <clears throat> on November 2nd, 2020, I noticed that there was only one ballot in the bin for delivery to USPS. And on November 3rd, Election Day, there were no ballots in the bin for delivery to USPS. I did not think of that as strange at the time. It was Election Day. The polls were closing that day. You'd think that the ballots would kind of trickle down and be done. <clears throat> so you guys can imagine my surprise that when on the next day, November 4th, a senior USPS employee whose name I do know had asked me if I'd forgotten any ballots the night before, election night. He explained to me that an order had come down from the Wisconsin-Illinois chapter of USPS that 100,000 ballots were missing. He then told me that his post office, the one at Milwaukee Street in Madison, Wisconsin, had dispatched employees to look for the missing ballots around 4 a.m. November 4th. He said, and I quote, around 4 a.m. And that only seven or eight ballots were found at United Mailing Services, my work. Based on my previous experience and habit of double checking for the ballots, I believe that to be a lie immediately. The following day, November 5th, 2020, I had a conversation with a different USPS employee, whose name I also know, in which she admitted that USPS employees were ordered to backdate ballots that were received too late to be lawfully counted. I asked this employee if I would be getting in trouble for those ballots the night before with my own boss, uh, just kind of making sure that I was covered, <laughs> because I, at first I did think perhaps I did miss ballots, but I couldn't have if they weren't on the cart where they're supposed to be. The employee said, uh, the employee said, no, I wouldn't, as long as they were postmarked for the third. And then she hesitated for a moment and said that's why they had us do that, referring to USPS employees. I didn't bring any of this to the attention of the supervisors at the USPS at the time due to what I perceived to be their hostility towards the president and their evident contempt of the law. I've heard those same employees make jokes about asking customers who came into the post office lobby, who did you vote for? Oh, President Trump? Okay. And then they would reference throwing the ballots directly into the trash. I'm not a Trump supporter. I'm not a Biden supporter. I voted for Joe Jordans in this election, and I voted Libertarian in the Wisconsin governor, governor's race in 2018, which was my first election that I could vote in. But I know that something wrong happened here, and I just want to see that something gets done about it for our state and for the people of our state so that people can have faith in our elections. I think um, the American people and the people of Wisconsin have a right to know what happened.
And the bottom line of this is, why was the USPS even looking for ballots on November 4th, hours after the polls closed at 8 p.m.? Thank you. All right, Ethan, uh, is there anything that you stated in your testimony that you would have changed or said differently had we given you an oath? No. Okay. All right, Representative and Sartwell, go ahead. I would like to say also that I have already signed a legally binding affidavit, so <clears throat> very good. Uh, thank you, and thank you for your testimony, sir. Uh, it, it's, it's ironic because a lot of people like to yell at uh, libertarians that they, they're throwing votes away, and yet you're here today to make sure that every vote is counted and counted validly. And I want to applaud you for that. Thank you. Um, the question I had is, you mentioned somebody earlier, and maybe this is in your sworn testimony, I, I haven't seen it, um, but you mentioned uh, uh, an employee of, I think you said it was of the USPS, told you that they were ordered to backdate um, ballots that came in after November 3rd. And I was wondering if, you, if that individual said anything about where those orders came from. Uh, like where the ballots yeah, what, what, actually come no, from? No, no, the, the orders to backdate them. So did that come from a direct supervisor? Uh, was that person aware of it coming from even higher up? Is, it, is there anything more about when, when that person said we were ordered to backdate them? Was there more to that? All that I was told was that it came down as an order from the Wisconsin-Illinois chapter of the USPS. So I would assume that that is a top-down order. Okay. Um, all right, that's all for now. Thank you. All right, next we have Senator Bernier. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, nice to see young people engaged in the electoral process. Um, so, so in Wisconsin, our law is that the ballots need to be received um, by the close of Election Day at 8 p.m., so if the Wisconsin, Illinois chapter of the United States Postal Service um, backdated um, ballots um, on the 4th, which was the day after, um, where were they delivered? They couldn't legally be counted anyway. Do you happen to know where they were delivered? All that I know is that when I would take the ballots to the post office, they would be loaded onto usually the 830 truck that would go to Milwaukee. And from there, I do not know where it would go. Okay, so there may be no way to track where those ballots went um, and, and um, where they were filed, unless maybe we can um, get somebody from the Milwaukee Election Commission to um, comment on it, um, which may or may not work. The USPS also has uh, extensive security security cameras at all of their loading docks and their facilities so if a proper investigation is done into this then all of that should be able to be found and it and each um, ballot envelope does have a tracking mechanism as well okay so um, any unofficial um, you know uh, question to you and it's more I'm I, I want to know your opinion um, it seems um, the United States has a culture issue in regard to conservatives versus liberals, um, which, um, since you're an, a young person, um, do, do you think that this cancel culture thing has crept its way into the United States Postal Service and that they feel an obligation to cancel out conservative voices versus liberal voices. From what your testimony, I glean that. But you, you are in that culture, and I want to know um, your opinion on that and if that is um, what seems to precipitate their behavior here. Um, if you can just let us know what, what your thoughts are on that. Well, uh, based on the jokes that they had made to me, as well as I'm very open about my political views. I'm not ashamed to admit I'm a libertarian. I consider myself independent. Um, and I have been open with that about my coworkers uh, at the time at UMS and USPS. People were pretty dismissive of it, and they said things like uh, one of you said, 
sometimes people see that as throwing their vote away and I've been told that millions of times so I guess just based on that there's definitely um, a contempt just between anybody's political parties it doesn't matter if you're left right in the middle libertarian if you are if you have different views people look at you differently thank you all right next we have representative murphy thank you mr speaker thank you ethan for testifying today so how long have you been an employee of the postal service uh, i began my job as a temporary hire for united mailing services through the temp agency strategic resources on august 26th my last day of work with them was November 5th. This didn't do, have anything to do with you being not working there. I mean, the uh, I your, actually, your affidavit or anything, did that uh, cause, cause problems that worked for you? No, um, okay. I've actually heard nothing from them or the temp agency when I've reached out to ask why I was terminated. Who did you file your affidavit with? Um, you. Do you mean like who was yeah, who sent is, to? Yeah, who was it given to? Who? Where? Um, I made a formal complaint with the Office of Inspector General. Okay. And just one last thing. How do you feel about the security of the U.S. Postal Service as it applies to voting? As far as, you know, postmarks uh, being an official date and time uh, and, and that sort of thing. As someone who got to directly see how the ballots were moving through the system, the uh, mail-in ballots, I voted in person. Um, I didn't want to take any chances with my ballot getting lost or just anything happening to it with the lengthy chain of custody that I've seen firsthand. So I voted here in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I won't say my polling place. I don't want to give away <laughs> where I was living. Thank you. All right, very good. I don't see any other questions. We still have some time left. All right, but seeing no other questions, uh, we're thank you for your testimony. I appreciate it very much. And we're going to go to our next person, who is Eric Cardell, and.